we've just leveraged our economy on the success of AI. If we're all in, we're gonna let the chips fall, safety is dead. The idea that the entire economy is strapped to this thing that has an unknown outcome and unknown path seems insane. Instead of building offices for humans, now we're building offices for AIs, you know? Three dads running three YouTube channels, working to wake up the world to AI risk. Tackle one missed warning shot each week. If it's Sunday, it's warning shots. Welcome back, everybody, to Warning Shots. I am John Sherman, joined by Liron Shapira of Doom Debates channel on YouTube, joined by Michael of the Lethal Intelligence channel here on YouTube. Every week, we take one or two things that have happened in the field of AI risk, uh, and we uh, talk about it in depth because it's something that should have been a big deal but was not. This week, we're going to talk about a couple of things, sort of two trains colliding, if you will, um, one of them is a partnership between OpenAI and NVIDIA that is committing our economy to total devotion to artificial intelligence. The other is the administration coming out and saying we are going to accelerate and safety is not a real concern. So, um, Liron, uh, tell, tell us about uh, train number one, train number two. They're just smashing together. What's going on? Yeah, so it all comes to a head in U.S. government policy. The U.S. has gone all in on AI, and people are describing it as we've just leveraged our economy on the success of AI. Leveraging meaning we've basically taken on debt. We've thrown a lot of money at these AI companies. The latest big news was that NVIDIA has now committed to take $100 billion, insane amount, off its own balance sheet coming out of its own profits and invest those into OpenAI, which is, I believe, its largest customer. You know, So this is basically vendor financing. So there's $100 billion right there. NVIDIA itself and uh, other AI companies, they're like 25% now of the S&P 500. So basically, this whole country is saying, we need this to spiral upwards. We need a high return on all the money that we're spending right now. And that's basically the only way to pull our economy forward and not have this big hangover where we've all lost money on these investments and, and GDP contracts. Oh, and by the way, if you want to keep it safe, what is the government saying about that? Let me read you the quote. Uh, give me one second to pull it up. It's a painful quote. It hurt me to read this, truly. Exactly. So here's Director Michael Kratios. He was previously the CTO of the United States and the Undersecretary of Defense. Currently, he's the Director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. So pretty influential guy in the White House. And he just tweeted, the U.S. totally rejects all efforts by international bodies to assert centralized control and global governance of AI. Ideological fixations on social equity, climate catastrophism, and so-called existential risk, so-called existential risk, are dangers to progress and obstacles to responsibly harnessing this tech. So basically the most dismissive attitude imaginable to the idea that a catastrophe might be real. It's like this idea of a catastrophe is totally fictional. We're all in. We're going to let the chips fall. Safety is dead. Your thoughts? Brutal. Michael. Say say something positive, please. <laughs> I will say some very uh, interesting positive uh, statistics. Um, so 80% of the earnings growth and 90% of the capital spending growth since ChatGPT launched are because of AI. And uh, I mean, data centers are eclipsing office construction spending. And in the B BGM uh, region, uh, like Northeast of America, 70% of last year's increase in electricity cost was because of data center demand. And, um, you know, Oracle just, uh, the stock just jumped 25% immediately in a few, you know, in a few, in, just because of a promise that 60 billion uh, will be spent by OpenAI, an amount OpenAI doesn't have, is not earning yet, and it will provide computing facilities Oracle does, hasn't built yet. So it's, it's so funny. And then um, these facilities will require the equivalent of uh, how many, nucle four nuclear plants. So like insane amounts of, uh, of energy. Um, and it's funny if uh, another way to read uh, what I just said about the construction uh, course is um, if you think that we're, we're closely, I'm, I want to share, uh, um, I will send you a link about the um, graph. It's basically in 2025, we'll get to the point where the cost of construction uh, sites for a workspace will be almost equal to the data center cost, which is in a way, if you, if you rephrase this, it's like instead of building offices for humans, now we're building offices for AIs, you know, 
<laughs> they literally say it's taken over this um, Spencer. So is it a bubble? Maybe, but it's definitely, uh, we're getting into a regime where everything is AI powered. Less and less is about humans uh, working. It's more about AI working. I mean, you know, there's the notion of too big to fail. We've sort of been through this once or twice. I feel like even in my lifetime, um, Liron, the idea that the entire economy is strapped to this thing that has an unknown outcome and unknown path uh, seems insane. Like, Correct. Nobody really knows what th there are no adults in the room. Nobody has seen the end of the thing and been like, walk this path. It's safe. It's just a, it's, bl it's blindfold. Exactly. Now, a lot of people in my position who are commenting are taking the skeptical position of like, wow, all this money is going in. Brace for a recession if it doesn't work. I think it'll probably work, right? I, I actually think that the exponential towards super intelligence, toward amazingly powerful AI, maybe it won't work in two years, but if you give it four years, five years, 10 years, I think it'll work. I think this piece of meat in our heads, we're not going to have an advantage for long. I do think that AI will climb past us one way or the other. The big problem I see when you say too big to fail it's not really, I'm not concerned about too big to fail. I'm just concerned about too big to stop or too big to control because people always say, don't worry. It obviously has a stop button. We can just turn off the computers. Every day that goes by, we're making it more and more unthinkable to stop. And it was already to, unthinkable to stop just the fact that it's on the internet. It's going to be a virus off the internet. You're not going to be able to shut down the internet. Now, not only do you have to shut down the internet, you also have to shut down the entire thing that you put your whole economy to depend on. It's all about this. Though. So we're fast marching towards a reality where the whole of our civilization runs on this AI substrate. And this is extremely radical because it means that literally all the value outed by humanity is controlled by a handful of corporates. And what the phrase you use, I love it, too big to fail. This is completely next level now. It will be, um, so you see, you know, it starts with art and white collar jobs, but soon thereafter, it will be about blue collar and may eventually will be the entire supply chain will be controlled by AI and automations. So even if we imagine a universal basic income regime, um, it means that literally everything you can own and consume will be controlled by those who control the AIs. And, um, and also, by the way, the humans will not be able to compete with the robots, but even if they were able to compete or whatever, I mean, it's going to be uh, they will not have the skills. Uh, people are going into the economy now, they have less skills. They don't, they don't have motiv they're not motivated to, to work hard to learn things because everything is done by AI now or, or uh, eventually, right? So if you follow this line, it becomes obvious that the only thing that uh, the oligarchs, the tech oligarchs will eventually control is just sitting on the throne and looking at the AIs running the things. And at the end of the day, even that, they will, not, they will not be needed either. And the AIs can at some point then yeah, just completely take control of everything. And they will be at the mercy of um, of these automation processes, which might calculate eventually to just switch, uh, you know, um, switch to optimize something that's not even human compatible. So, so we have this future where we have these unelected, unaccountable, unvetted corporate leaders in charge of the world, right? Like that, that, that. Th there'll be five or six seats on top of this throne, and and may, I don't know, maybe you know, maybe three, two, one, whatever, and and these guys will be up there. Um, we talk all the time that the reason they're able to do this job, the reason they're able to go to work every day and build this machine that the experts say has a good chance of ending all life on earth. The reason they do it is because they think they can do it more safely than the next guy. And it, you know, it's just, there's a little bit of no nobleness in that, right? Cause I can be more safe than the next guy. What if it's not that? What if it's, I just really want one of those platinum chairs at the top. Yeah. And then uh, uh, what just Leo said about the unplugging, and so it will be a position where the AI can simply pull the plug on uh, on the AI powered civilization. So it's not you cannot unplug it. AI might unplug you, you know. And it's not like you can call the cops. It will be robo cops, right? So uh, you, there will nothing, nothing for you to do at that point. Okay, so we have these platinum seats being created for a few individuals to run the entire world, and then we have the government who is saying. This is great. We're all for it. And all gas, no brakes. Let's do this. Like, isn't the government concerned that they're making private individuals who will have power greater than the sum total of the government? Potentially. Right. I, I mean, I, I've just been so disappointed with some of these statements by people in government. This is the latest one. I, I just think this is 
disqualifying. I mean, let's read Jacob Helberg. He's yeah. the undersecretary of undersecretary of state designate. And yeah. on Twitter, he wrote, "AI catastrophism is the new climate catastrophism." Catastrophists always claim a massive expansion of regulatory control is necessary to quote protect you from an imminent calamity. We totally reject it. You read that in all caps on Twitter. As President Trump has said, America started the AI race and it will win it. That is the AI policy of this administration. So what's low quality discourse about this is that he is character assassinating the people making one side of the argument. He's basically saying, hey, you know how there seems to be this argument where, with some people making certain claims and offering reasons for those claims? They're just catastrophists. You don't have to listen to catastrophists. Forget about it. And that's just a terrible way to conduct discourse. I mean, it's been said so many times with so much social proof that no, sorry, the people warning AI risks actually have a legitimate argument. At the very least, you need to engage with the argument. And this is just, you know, this is idiocracy to make a statement like this from somebody in government. Michael? Yeah, I think, um, actually, I think the government will be in huge trouble um, increasingly because of the job replacement. Which is um, which is an uh, unbelievable like um, just some real statements uh, from big names like McKinsey and Goldman Sachs. They're thinking about seventy percent of office work would be completely gone in the next few years. We're talking like five ten years, and some are even more aggressive in predictions. Like Dario from Anthropic, they're saying, for example, he's talking about programming. Ninety percent of programming will be done by AI. And um, actually, it's so funny when people say, you know, this is like the Industrial Revolution. We stopped being farmers, so we start doing some more interesting jobs. But that's BS, really, because, I mean, there is nowhere left to go. As Leron was saying earlier, if it, um, if it does what your brain does, um, then it's over. We are brains. Yeah. I mean, our bodies are biological r- robotic machines. And uh, replacing brains simply means replacing humans completely. They say, for example, AI will create some new jobs. Okay, cool. I mean, AI then will replace those jobs as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. will replace those jobs too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing about the statements like Jacob Halberg saying, we can always reject catastrophism every time. This always works to just go forward on tech and win these races. Okay, so the discontinuity, like you're saying, Michael, is we're now surpassing the human brain. So, you know, Jacob Halberg is saying, yeah, we as humans controlling the earth, our brain always pulls through. Look at how our brain solves everything. And he's kind of missing the part where our brain is going to now be number two on this planet. Exactly. And uh, just another nice quote is like, you know, humans um, will have a lot of agents. So humans will be the managers and they will have an army of agents. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't need a huge leap to just think, okay, the next, the next version of AI will be a manager of agents as well. So what happens exactly. then? <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, it's just slightly more sophisticated than an AI agent can be a manager of AI agents. So yeah, it's literally a matter of uh, of when, not uh, if. And uh, I mean, just think of our kids. I mean, what can they dream about? What what kind of motivation can they have to study hard, to become professionals, to compete in non-existent job markets? You know, like what careers? Nothing, right? So, so I mean, if you won't go in the subs, I'll come back to it later. So because I talk a lot. No, let me just say about this, guys, about this. So so last night in my office here, I had forty people here from uh, American Advertising Federation. It was like a AAF chapter meeting about um, AI, and so it's like a six person panel, all work in different parts of ad agencies, marketing uh, things, talking about AI. And they were asked about job loss, and half of them were like, "No, I don't think it's going to affect any jobs." And then later on, they were like, oh, well, of course, we're not hiring any junior people anymore. Uh, And no one is putting two and two together. Nobody's hiring any junior people. You can't have senior people 10 years from now. If you don't have junior people now, the whole whole chain is falling apart and no one is noticing. Everyone is just looking at the candy. That, that it's that it's you know look at what it did look at this picture i made look at this video i made look at this efficiency it created in my office and no one is like seeing where the where the lines lead and just extending it uh, d- just quickly for the chain because i'm very passionate about this so if if the if the chain of knowledge breaks it's the first time in the history ever ever well there will be a generation that doesn't know how to do things Okay, this has never happened before. So the next generations might have less amount of skills than our ancestors. And even, Michael, even I think the, I'm already part of that generation. I, I think uh, my wife will tell you <laughs> we just bought a new we just bought a new home, and my wife will assure you that I'm part of the generation that doesn't know how to do things. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's the example here, here as well. 
And the, but, right. but I think next generation will be like cavemen. They will not even, but less than cavemen. Cavemen knew, knew how to hunt. I mean, this generation is about being TikTokers. And even TikTokers is gone because you have all these AI influencers now. So it's, I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Wow. Um, all right. We are about at time. I mean, I guess is, uh, is there anything positive we can say about the, like, like that stuff from the U S government is terrible, just straight terrible. I'm kind of the person who benefits in the short term. I mean, I have money in the stock market. I have some money in startups. Uh, my job is tech. So I, I plan to have a good time for like the next year. Right. But I, I'm just, I, but I also think that the music is going to stop. So like I can fully empathize with why everybody's excited. You know, I listen to a bunch of tech podcasts. A lot of us are having a great time for now. Right. But if you can lift your head up and just see the future. So, uh, I mean, you said good news. So I guess don't lift your head up <laughs> and look at the future if you want good news. <laughs> yeah. I agree. The great news is uh, Leon is making some money. So, yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right, gentlemen, a pleasure as always. Uh, let's send it out with a couple of uh, and uh, I will uh, see you guys. Oh, Michael, there you go. Leron. Oh, oh man, that's a heavy way to that. Jesus, that's too much. Wow, that's a large weapon. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. All right, see you next week. See you.